Let us look at some synonyms for peace. What other words describe peace or can promote peace? One certainly is equality, and others are equity, symmetry, reciprocity, equal rights, equal dignity. In other words, when people, when human beings have the same equal opportunities, equal rights, equal privileges, equal responsibilities, equal duties, peace should prevail. When this balance is disturbed is when conflicts come in and peace takes the back door. That is not what should be happening. So how do we guarantee equality among all the different areas of human involvement? That is the key to peace in today's society. You can see them as part of the definition of peace or of the peaceful means. In other words, this balance is what maintains peace, what will maintain peace. As such, they are necessary rather than sufficient conditions. So for peace to prevail, you are not trying to meet predetermined conditions. You are trying to make sure that the necessary basis, the equality, the balance is maintained. That's a given. It should be there. Equality does not guarantee peace, but inequality almost guarantees the opposite, direct violence in one form or another. What this simply means is, even if equality exists, because of the human nature of us human beings, and because some people will want to strive for better standards, for better heights in their own livelihoods, conflict may show up. But, the absence of equality, which simply means inequality if it's there. If there is already a disparity between two levels of something, then conflict definitely will be there and peace will not be there. So you have to understand, just because equality is present does not guarantee peace. But just because inequality is present, it definitely guarantees the absence of peace. This conflict can be physical or verbal, directed against the body, mind, or spirit of human beings. Because obviously, when conflict exists, one group is against another group. One individual is against another individual. And in the sense, if it's verbal, it can be contained differently. If it's physical, it will need to be contained differently also. And therefore, why would you let a conflict that begins verbally end up being physical. If people had the means to control it at the verbal level, physical conflict and physical interactions would not be necessary. Peace studies are critical. As critical studies, peace studies do the same as critiques of human behavior. Because peace involves humans, human behavior comes into play because it's human behavior that determines whether conflict will exist, whether conflict will rise, whether peace will be sustained. Moral philosophers, priests, criminal judges, all these people have a role to play. Do compare data with values related one way or the other to peace, and then conclude in terms of right, wrong, both, or neither nor. So we have to understand that because peace is critical, it must be present. If it's absent, issues will become worse. Because of the critical nature of this peace, we have to understand why different individuals from different areas or different aspects of human life are involved and why something is then termed, this is right, this is wrong, you could do this or this, you could do this and this, you, could, you should not do this or this. That's critical to understand. For this, the criteria have to be explicit and the comparison carried out with the same rigor as in other fields. We do a lot of comparison in sociology, in anthropology, in other areas, and similarly for peace studies, this comparison must also be conducted, and it has to be 
at the same standard. We cannot water down the standard when comparing for peace. Peace studies are constructive. As constructive studies, peace studies would not shy away from making recommendations. Because we want people to change, we want human beings to change, change happens when you bring in therapy. And bringing in therapy is what makes peace studies constructive. Because if the right therapy is provided, the right results will be seen. And the right results are peace sustained and maintained. Expectations from therapy can then be held against values relating to peace to conclude in terms of adequate, inadequate, both or neither. So based on the therapy provided, we can then make comparisons again and we can conclude the therapy was adequate, the therapy was inadequate, the therapy was somewhere adequate and somewhere inadequate, or the therapy was utterly useless, nothing worked at all. So these kinds of conclusions can then be made if we provide the right kind of therapy at the right time so that peace can prevail.